Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. I'm Brett M. Frager, and in this video tutorial we'll be covering audio and video tracks. A track is a horizontal column on the timeline that allows users to place audio, video, images, or other project files from other Adobe products. Tracks are separated into two categories, video and audio. Video tracks can hold video clips, images, or other Adobe project files. While on the other hand, audio tracks can only hold audio clips like music, sound bites, or voice clips. The cursor is now showing you the Video 1 track. You know it's the Video 1 track by the name it has in the top right hand corner called Video 1. Since this is the Video 1 track, the grayish column to the right of the name Video 1 is considered to be the Video 1 track. The name where Video 1 is is just the properties panel for the Video 1 track. You cannot drag anything down here. However, over to the right is where you would drag down your video clips, your images, or your other project files from other Adobe products. The same purpose applies to audio tracks down below. You can see here that it says Audio 3. This is the third audio track in the timeline. So just like the video track, the highlighted area with the audio track's name is just the properties while to the right of it is where the user would place music, sound bites, or voice recorded audio. We can scroll up and down our tracks by using the up and down arrows located on the bottom to mid right side of the timeline. Select the up or down arrows to go in the direction that you wished for the each track. The cursor is now moving up the video track. You can also drag down this little gray box to move up and down the video tracks. You can also select this gray box by holding it down with your left mouse button to move up and down your audio and video tracks. The cursor is now doing that now. If you wanted to see more video tracks at once without the need to move up and down with either the arrows or the gray box, you can move the cursor over to the solid black line until your cursor becomes an up and down arrow with like an equal sign in between the arrows. Now select, now select the black line by hitting the left mouse button. While holding down the left mouse button, drag up to see more video and audio tracks or move down to see fewer. I will move up so that we can see more video and audio tracks. Both video and audio tracks are ranked by their number. The higher a number is, the more superior an object will be when placed on a higher track. To create an example of this, I have imported some video files. I will now drag one video clip into the video one track. You can see up here in the viewport that our video has been placed. However, if we drag another video clip into a higher up video track, then that video will cover what is currently in our viewport and in our video one track. I will now show you an example of this. I'll go over and I'll drag a different video clip into the video three video track. You can see now that our you can see now that our video clip you can see now that our previous video clip has been replaced with the video clip that has been placed on the video 3 track. This tactic is very useful when you want to create titles or other things that are placed on top of video files. To demonstrate this idea further, we will shrink down the video clip that is placed on the video 3 track so that it's in the bottom right hand corner of the original video 1 track. An editor might use this strategy when trying to recreate a phone conversation or a chat room idea. To do this, we go up to the viewport where my cursor currently is and select the video with our left mouse button. You can see here that a bounding box has been placed around our video. Since my viewport is so small and my video is so large that it doesn't fit on the stage, we must resize our video to our desired wish. In order to do this, we go down to the rectangular box that says fit and select a smaller size. I will choose 25%.
you can see that our bounding box is still too big. So just do it again, but this time we'll go down I'll go down to 10%. There we are. We can now see our whole bounding box and our stage in our viewport. In order to resize this proportionally, I will select the corner of the bounding box until my cursor becomes a diagonal double-sided arrow. I will select the corner of the bounding box with my left mouse cursor and hold down shift so that Adobe Premiere Pro sizes the video proportionally. Now I will drag down with my cursor so that the video shrinks. Now that the video and the bounding box is in our viewport, we can go back down to the rectangular box and choose fit. Now we can see our whole viewport as well as the video. If I was going to place this video in the bottom right hand corner and this was the size I wanted, I would just left click with my mouse and drag the video clip down to the bottom right hand corner. Since this is the video size I wanted, I can now go down to my playhead and play out the video by hitting spacebar on my keyboard. While the video is playing, you can see that the video in the bottom right hand corner is moving as well as the main video in the background. I will make the viewport larger so that you could see this more clearly in the tutorial. Just to remind you that this bigger video is on the video 1 track while the smaller video is on the video 3 track. Alright, I'll hit the spacebar to stop the video and I'll resize the video track so that we can see all three of them. Alright, now since we've seen an example of video tracks, I will now move to an example with audio tracks. The most common use of more than one audio track is when an editor wants to put music behind a person talking. We will demonstrate this example. I have a voice mp3 file ready to be dragged down to the audio one track. So I will go down and choose the voice clip and drag it down to my audio one track. I'll move my playhead back over to the beginning so you can hear the voice. That is just an example of what an editor might find when someone is speaking. In this case, it was from my previous Adobe Flash tutorial. Now we'll jazz up the audio by placing music on the Audio 2 track, which will play behind the voice in the Audio 1 track. With my cursor, I'll go up and select my music and drag it down to the Audio 2 track. Now if I take my playhead and move it all the way to the beginning, when I start the video again, you will hear both the voice as well as the music. So now I will hit the spacebar on my keyboard to play the video along with the audio. Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to use internal and external libraries in Adobe Flash CS5. In this tutorial, I will be covering what a library is as well as how to access internal and external libraries. With that stated, we can now start the tutorial. For this tutorial, this idea was just a basic example. Of course, you could get more detailed with precise cuts and lowering the levels of the audio and the music, but this is just a basic tutorial on how to use tracks in your timeline. Well, that concludes this tutorial on how to use the timeline tracks in Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. Thank you for watching and remember to stay tuned for other Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 tutorials as well as other media program tutorials. Thank you.